Hey, thanks for checking out another free songwriting lesson. My name is Matthew McCloskey, and today we're taking a look at The Scientist by Coldplay. I'm going to be showing you the top three tricks that Chris Martin uses in this song that make it a success, and how you can use those same tips, tricks, techniques in your own music to take your songwriting to the next level. Let's get going. So the first thing about this song that makes it so successful is how Chris Martin writes the chords into the song. So it starts on a D minor. Come up to me, you goes to B flat, tell you I'm sorry, goes to F, you don't know how lovely you are. This last one's a little bit weird. An F sus2 takes the second tone of your scale, in this case a G, and brings that into the chord. So normally, this is an F, an A, and a C, but adding a 2 in there just gives it a little bit of tension. It's a little uneven. We don't see this in pop music very often, and that's one cool chord in this progression. The other thing that's really cool about this progression is that it's asymmetrical. Asymmetry means if you draw a red line through it, right down the middle like I've done here, it's not the same on both sides. And you can see, we've got a D minor and a B flat up here, and then an F and an F sus2 down here. So the chords are different on either side of the progression. That's really important, because if you use the same chords, let's say it was symmetrical, same on both sides, you'd have a D minor down here and a B flat over here. That means you have two chords in this section that you're just going through over and over and over again. What happens when something happens over and over and something stays the same over and over again, people get bored. That is not what you want for your song. That's why you gotta think about asymmetry. You gotta split your chord progression down the middle and say, how can I change this? How can I tweak this to keep it fresh and keep people engaged? That's what Chris Martin has done here. So let's say you really, really like this progression, but you don't want to use these exact chords. You want to write something similar to The Scientist, but you don't want to copy Coldplay. How do you use this influence and bring it into your own music? The answer is the Nashville number system. There's a download in the description that'll explain how to use the Nashville number system, how to do what I'm doing here. But basically what we're gonna do is move this progression into another key so you can use it in your own song. So let's say we're in the key of F major. That's the first thing that we gotta understand. Once we know that F is our key, we have to assign a number to each one of these chords based on that. Since F is our key, F is one. This is a one sus two. Based on it being an F, we can figure out that D minor is a minor six and B flat is a four. Now that we have numbers, instead of these chords, we can take these numbers and use them to put this progression in another key. So let's say we want to write in D instead of F. So in D, your minor six becomes your B minor, your four becomes your G, and your one, since we're in the key of D, becomes D. This is a D sus two. You now have a brand new progression that sounds kind of like Coldplay, but it's not the exact same thing. This is a great way to bring in influence from artists that you really, really like without outright copying them. This is how you make it your own. If you're a songwriter, you've probably heard people say that. This is one way to do that. The last thing that I want to point about this progression that makes it really cool is this chord right here. Normally, in pop music, most progressions are based around the minor six, the four, the one, and we normally see the five right here. But Coldplay knows that. Chris Martin knows that. So he chose to leave the five out, or did he? In this case, he puts the one in with sus two. In the case of an F, a sus two is an added G within an F chord. Now a G doesn't normally belong in an F chord, but guess what chord it does belong in? It belongs in the five. G is part of a C chord, which is the 5 in this scale. They give us part of the 5, but not all of it. So it's different, but similar. That's what you got to be thinking in your music. How can I take a usual chord progression, what can I twist in it to make it stand out, but still be familiar? Because people want something that's different, but similar to what they've heard before. That's what you got to be thinking about as you're writing your chord progressions. Make sure you grab that download in the description. That's going to help you a ton in your songwriting. The second thing about this song that makes it work so well is the structure that Coldplay uses in their chorus. What I mean by that is when we hit this A right here, it's Nobody said it was easy. Nobody ever said it would be this hard. The reason this structure works so well is because, well, wait a second, is that symmetrical? Is it the same on both sides? Yeah, it actually is. So normally this structure wouldn't work, right? 
because we've got the same thing on both sides and if you give your audience the same thing twice, they're going to check out and be like, eh, I don't have any reason to listen to this. I've already heard these two lines. Why are you repeating them the exact same way again? But the way that Chris Martin mixes it up is he adds an extra line down here. This is, oh, take me back to the star. So now, with this extra line down here, this structure works really, really well. And especially when you have an odd number of lines in a structure, those work really, really well because you can't split a five-line structure down the middle. You can't split a three-line structure down the middle. They are, by nature, asymmetrical. And when they're asymmetrical like that, your audience isn't going to know when the next section is coming. They aren't going to know what's going to happen next as well because there's an odd number of lines, whether you've got five or three or one. That's why this works so well. So remember, as you're thinking about the ways to structure your song, think about asymmetry. Think about, can I run a line through the middle of any one of my sections and is it the same on both sides? If it is, consider adding a line. Consider taking a line out. Coldplay could have done that with this chorus as well. They didn't need both these. They could have made it like this too. Nobody said it was easy. After that line, they could have just gone to the next section. Would that have worked? Maybe. But it's one way to keep it asymmetrical. Think about that as you're writing. The last thing that I want to talk about in this song is dynamics. We talk about dynamics a lot. It's one way to change things and keep it fresh as your song goes along. Dynamics are the overall volume, how loud or quiet your song is. Now with most pop music, you see things like drops, where it's sudden, right? You'll be going along at this level and then it'll drop for a second, and then you'll go into the next section. Coldplay doesn't use drops, they don't use anything really sudden in this song, but it's still really successful, and one of the big reasons is because of its dynamics. Instead of having a bunch of these little, like, blips throughout the song, what Coldplay does instead is they make it a slow burn. They start off quiet, right? In the introduction, it's just the piano. Then it gets into the first verse, and we get Chris Martin's voice. It's a little bit louder. We go into the chorus, we get some more instruments. Then in the second verse, we get a drum kit and a bass gets a little bit louder, until at the very end of the song, it's just, it's all the way through the roof. The song is just blasting, it's going full volume. That's the format that Coldplay uses. That's why their songs are so successful, because instead of going with the usual way of handling how loud or quiet your song is, they go against that. They say, okay, we're gonna try something different. Instead of giving you these little, like, builds where in the verse we're quiet and we get a little bit louder and then we drop down to the verse again and we get a little bit louder and we drop down to the verse again. We're going to just build it all the way through a song until at the very end we give you the payoff. That's a huge, super creative way to be thinking about this. So try that in one of your songs sometimes. Try starting really, really quietly and then gradually build it up until the very end of the song you're just going all out. That could be a really, really cool way to get your audience engaged because most songs are not like this. And as you're writing, look at the usual rules that you're used to seeing, whether it's volume or for structure or for chord progression. Look at the usual rules. Think about what you're expected to do and then think about ways you can go against that. How can I go against this rule that I'm supposed to follow about volume or structure or progression or song topics or the way you write your lyrics? How can I go against it? Because going against it is what's going to keep your song different and it's what's going to draw your audience in. Thanks for checking this video out. I hope what I've explained here today has been useful to you and it's helped further your songwriting in some way. If anything I've covered in this video is unclear to you, or if there was something in this song that you want to hear me go into more depth on, send me a comment in the section. I read all of them and I want to make sure I'm helping you guys. Please subscribe to this channel for more videos in the future. I would love to have you guys along for the ride. Uh, if you have any ideas for songs that I can do in the future that you think are great or artists that you think write really well, send me those in the comment section as well. I'm always on the hunt for new music that I can analyze for you guys. And lastly, make sure you grab that download of the Nashville number system in the description. That's gonna help you a ton in your songwriting. My name is Matthew McCloskey. Thanks again for checking out this video, and I will see you guys next time.